This is Alemi from George Mason University Informatics Program. These slides show you how to create a causal network through lasso regression. Lasso regression is a statistical technique that identifies a subset of variables that make other variables irrelevant in a prediction task. This shows a regression equation with x's indicating independent variables and y indicating the response variable. In lasso, the parameter lambda is called the penalty variable. It is multiplied by the sum of the absolute value of the parameters. When the value of lambda is large, then more variables are forced to drop out of regression. The larger the lambda, the smaller the subset of features that will have a statistically significant relation to the response variable. Here we see an example of how changes in lambda affects the cross-validated accuracy of predictions, shown as area under the curve, or AUC, on the y-axis. The x-axis shows minus log of lambda. Log of lambda is negative, so minus log of lambda makes it a positive number. As lambda gets larger, we have more accurate models and with fewer predictors in them. More accurate and more parsimonious. Early on, with minus log of lambda values less than 4, we see rapid improvements in accuracy. Between 4 and 5.8, we still see an increase in accuracy, but at a slower rate. After 5.8, the accuracy is minimally improved. Therefore, we might decide that lambda at 5.8 produces the best model for us, both parsimonious and ac relatively accurate. So how does lasso regression identify the structure of causal networks? The structure of a causal network is specified if all parents in Markov blanket of the node are identified. Let us define what we mean by parents in the Markov blanket of a node. This graph shows the causal network. In this network, 11 variables are related by arcs. Each arc connects a pair of variables. There are no cycles in the network. You can start from causes and see its effect. x1 leads to x5, x5 to x8, and x8 to x10, and so on. Notice that causal relationships don't, may not exist, but correlation exists. So for example, x6 is the common cause of x8 and x9. So x8 and x9 are not causally related to each other, but they are correlated. In fact, every node in a causal network is correlated with each other. The Markov blanket of variable x6 is shown here inside the dashed circle. This is a set of variables that separates x6 from all other variables. In this graph, the green color variables are in the Markov blanket, and they make blue variables as irrelevant, meaning if we know the values of green variable, we can set the variable of x6 without knowledge of the blue variable. Lasso regression does the same thing. It identifies the green variables, and it, those are significant in lasso regression, and all the blue variables would be insignificant predictors. The Markov blanket includes parents of x6, which are x2 and x3. The variables that immediately precede x6 and are connected to it. Markov blanket also includes children of x6, in this case x8 and x9. Finally, Markov blanket includes co-parents. These are other parents of children of x6. In this network, these are x5 and x7. The order and timing of occurrence of a variable identifies the parents in Markov blanket of a network. So doing a lasso regression of a response variable on variables that preceded in time identifies not only the Markov blanket, 
but a subset of variables within the markup blanket, notably the parents within the markup blanket. This is a crucial subset for construction of a network, as if you know the parents in the markup blanket of every variable in the network, then you have the entire network structure. The order and timing of variables can be a set of definition, can be set by definition. For example, date of birth occurs before any other event in the person's life. It can be set by average time of occurrence. For example, older people tend to have Alzheimer's and younger people tend to have drug abuse. So if drug abuse is in our, in our equation, it occurs before Alzheimer's. It can be done by when the variable was measured. For example, a diagnosis prior to treatment is comorbidity, and a diagnosis after treatment is a complication. Comorbidities occur prior to complication. Let's just go through an example. This is a network. Let us first familiarize ourselves with the concept of parents in the network. For each node, there are the nodes that precede it and are connected to it with a directed arc. So what are the parents in the Markov blanket of the variable RF? H and P are the parents in the Markov blanket of RF. They are significantly related to RF they occur prior to RF. If one controls these variables, they do then de facto one controls the effect of any other preceding covariate on RF. Lasso regression can be used to detect the parents. This provides the equation of lasso regression of RF on all variables that occur prior to it. These include P, H, CL, and DME. The parameter lambda in red is multiplied by some of the other parameters. So when lambda is large, it drives the parameters to zero so that the product of lambda and the parameters become smaller. Only H and P will have a significant relationship with RF. DME and CL are correlated with RF but Lasso drops these variables in part because of intercorrelation among the variables. H blocks the effect of these two variables on RF. Let us try another example. What is the equation that will identify parents to our LTH? The response variable is LTH. The independent variables are all the variables that occur before LTH, which is the same set of variables that occur before RF. We now expect that Lasso will identify P and H are significant, CL and DME are not significant. The general process can be described. Each node is selected as a response variable. Each node is a Lasso regress on all variables that preceded in time. The variables that remain statistically significant are the parents in the Markov blanket of the response variable. This process identifies parents for all nodes in the network, de facto identifying the entire network. Here is a code for doing lasso regression using the package GLMNet. First, you read the data and drop variables that are not relevant to the analysis. You use the, word, the command subset to drop the variables that you don't need. You need to exclude the response variable from the matrix of independent variables. So here we are, the negative 35 says that that variable cannot be part of the X variable. You need to set the response variable. Here, the column 35 is set as the response variable. And in column 35, we have actual use of citalopram, the antidepressant. Then please do a cross-validated fit to the data. This will produce the lasso regression with different values of lambda. 
you wanted as an output the coefficients of lando dot one se that's one standard error above the minimum that it guarantees us a parsimonious model that is just as accurate as anything else here is the sample output you will get from lasso regression the periods indicate the variables that have a zero regression coefficients these have been dropped as lambda increases you see more of these dotted variables this output is for minimum lambda, and you can have a more parsimonious model at lambda of one standard error higher than the minimum. Here we see how the two regressions were combined to create a single network model. The first regression had citalopram as response and baseline diseases as independent variables. The second regression had remission of symptoms as response and citalopram and baseline comorbidities as independent variables. Once the structure of the network has been determined, then parameters for the combined network are, are assessed by fitting the network to data using a software such as Netica. The points of these slides are the following. Repeated lasso regression on preceding variables identifies the entire structure of a causal network. 